Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to make an ornate gothic window frame using a couple of tools that often people don't know about. On the screen you can see a wall section that I've been designing, and we've got this opening here for where there's going to be a window. But to match the sci-fi gothic theme that this terrain is going to have, we want to make something suitable for this. We're going to start by making a profile, and then we're going to look at how we're going to make this go around this window frame in the easiest way possible. So we're going to press Shift and A to bring in a cube, and just because of the size I want, I'm going to change this cube to being 6.5 wide, and then I'm going to press G, and then Z to bring that up. I should say now that the screencast keys don't seem to be working very well for me in the new version of Blender, which is 3.1, so I'm having to use a different bit of software. You can see the screencast keys in the bottom right-hand corner. If anyone knows how to get them working in Blender 3.1, do feel free to drop me a message or comment in the video, I'd really appreciate it. So, first thing we're going to do is going to make this look a little bit more interesting, a bit more ornate. So we're going to add in some detail here. So I'm going to go into edge mode, and importantly I'm going to make sure that this button is off the auto merge vertices, otherwise we're going to have a problem here. I'm going to press Ctrl and R to bring in an edge loop, click to confirm I only want one. I'm going to bring it all the way over to this edge, this is why we need to have the merge vertices off, otherwise this would combine together. And then I'm going to press G and X to move it along the X axis. I'm going to move that 1.5 and hit enter to get that working. And I'm going to do the same on the other direction. So Control and R, click, bring it all the way to the end. And I'm going to press G and this time Y because it's on the Y axis. And I want it to go 1.5 as well. And I'm going to hit enter. At this point, I'm going to start extruding out some faces. So I'm going to click this face, E to extrude. I want that out one. And same for this one, so E and 1, and I've got those extruded. So now I want to add some detail here on these two edges. So again, back into edge mode, I'm going to select these two edges, and I'm going to do something to bring in a bevel. Now I'm going to press the forward slash key to isolate this, and I'm going to go into top view here, and I'm going to press Control and B. So what I'm going to do is get these to about the size I want, somewhere about there. Now I'm going to press P, which allows me to access the profile, and I can now change the bevel to be in a different direction. I'm actually going to have this sticking out to about there. Click, and then I've got this bevel extruded out. Now this is quite nice. It's a really quick way of doing this. And I should say this is actually just affecting this shape. So I'm just moving the shape in and out here. Obviously, you can do this after the fact. I had it at 0.052. So let's get that there, I think that looks quite nice. And then I'm gonna press tab and go into object mode. Now, there is one thing I'll quickly note here. If I go back into edge mode, if I click on this one and press Control and B, you'll notice that it keeps the bevel mode that it previously had. So here we've now got a bevel going in the wrong direction. If we want to fix this, we need to change that shape to being 0.5. That is what a standard bevel is. So do be aware that this is going to keep that to that last setting. 0.5 is what you want to do to fix that. I'm going to press Ctrl and Z because I don't want that one beveled like that. Next, we want to make this symmetrical. So I can do this in hard ops very easily just by pressing Alt and X. And this allows me to symmetrize by clicking one of these options. Interestingly, and some people find this a little bit odd, is that you click on the side that you want to be mirrored. So I want this one mirroring to that side. You don't click on where you want it mirrored to. So I'm going to click there, and we've got that mirrored. Now, if you don't have hard ops, which is a paid for add-on, if you just press tab and go into whatever mode, I'm going to go to edge mode, press A to select everything, and go to mesh, and then you can go to symmetrize there. Now at the moment, this is gonna do this wrong because it's trying to go from the minus X to the plus X. We don't want that. I want to go from this, which if I look at my gimbal, is the minus Y to the positive Y. So minus Y to positive Y, and then we've got that fixed. So it's really important to use this gimbal to help you out. I mean, you can do it by trial and error, but that'll take a while. So let's press forward slash to get out of isolated mode on the number pad. And then we can see what we've got here. And we're gonna to have to fix some bits of this just to make this usable in what we're gonna do next. But I think you'll agree, that's quite an interesting outline for this architecture. Back into vertex mode, and we need to get rid of this because we want this to be one solid face. So several ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna click on a vertex to unselect everything else. 
I'm going to press on C, which activates circle select, and I can scroll this up and down to make my circle bigger. And all I need to do is click on my vertices, and it will select all of them. If you haven't used circle select before, importantly, you must press escape to get out of that, otherwise any commands aren't going to do anything. And then I'm going to press Control and X, and that's going to dissolve those vertices that I don't want while keeping all of the mesh. And now you'll see if I go into face mode, I can just select that as one face. And that's very important for what we're going to do later. I'm going to go back into vertex mode, and I'm just going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, and we're ready to go. Now this isn't quite wide enough for my wall, so I'm just going to press G to start moving this. I'm going to press X to constrain to the X axis, go to approximately where I want. I want it to just stick out a little bit so I don't have any problems when merging these together. I'm going to go into isolated mode, vertex mode, shift and Z. I'm going to select all of these vertices there, out of isolated mode and out of x-ray mode by pressing the forward slash and then shift and Z. And I just want to G and then Y to move this on the y-axis until it comes out as far as I want it to be. Somewhere about there, I think. And then again, I'm going to symmetrize this, Alt and X. But having done it this way, I need to then go into edge mode, select that edge and Control and X to dissolve it back into object mode, and let's get moving this around. So first of all, we can now go into edit mode for the whole face, and I can select that whole face nice and easily, and I can press G and Z to move this up to where I want it to be, somewhere like there. Now, this is where we're gonna come into a problem, and where we're gonna use a very nice tool to solve this. Now, if this was another way of doing this, for example, we didn't have all of this ornate detail, this would be an easy problem to solve. I just press Ctrl and A, bring in a cube, G to move that to approximately the right place, or actually I'll just move it over here to sort of demonstrate, and if I came into face mode, G and Z to move that up, if I got to there and that's where I wanted it, knowing that this is 6.5 units across, this would be easy, I'd just E to extrude it out, type in 6.5 to get that there, then I'd just select that face and start extruding that one easy. We'd end up with fairly nice geometry and we'd have no problems, but it's not that simple here. We've got a lot of ornate detail to deal with, so we can't do that. I'm just going to delete that object out because we don't need it. So instead we're going to use a different tool. So back into face mode, I've got that face selected and we're going to scroll down the tools on the side to get to a tool called shear. Now there is another way to get to this as well. I'll talk about that in a second. So if I just click shear and we get this icon coming up, with all these different axes that we could start playing around with. And I want this to be moving on the Z axis, and that's here. Now, obviously we've got another Z axis here, but that would be on the far side of my object. I want this on the X side. So if I start clicking that, I can now bend this round. And what's important about this is that it keeps the width that we've had. So it's not changing the width. You'll notice if I press Control Z a couple of times and go back into my select box, if I was to do this another way, which some people try to do, it's horrible. And let's say I extruded this out, rotated it round, and you'll see this affects everything. And then some people say, okay, well, I'm gonna rotate it round 45 degrees. And I'm gonna press S to try and scale this. And I'll guess when it's about right. That's horrible. Like, we don't want to do that. We want to be as precise as we can, and that's where the shear tool comes in. So, going back to the shear tool, the other way of selecting this is if I press shift and space, I get all these options, and I can just go down. This is literally copying the options that are just there, but they're all quite easy to see, and they come exactly where I want. So, I want the shear option, and then I'm going to start moving that down, and I want it to be 45 degrees. Now, we get this offset here, and at the moment it's 0 0.6, and it's not quite 45 degrees. So what we want to do is move that to 1, hit enter, and now this will be perfectly 45 degrees. Now just to explain what that 1 is, effectively, if I just bring in the annotation, the width of my object, so that width there, is considered 1 when using the shear tool. So if I wanted to go down that same amount, which would bring it to 45 degrees, I need the offset to be one. If I want it to be less than that, then obviously I can just play around with whatever I want to type in. So 45 degrees is one. If I typed in 0 0.5, I'd have got half of that, so 22 and a half degrees. 
Importantly, I want to type in 0 0.6 reoccurring if I want to get 30 degrees, say, and some people might want that as a useful angle. So that's where we've got that. We want to type in one to get 45 degrees. I'm just going to control and Z to get rid of those annotations. And now we want to extrude this out. But if I press E, it's going to go, well, 45 degrees, which could be useful. But all I'm going to do is press escape. Now, importantly about the extrude tool is if I extrude and press escape, it still actually has done the extrude function. This can cause errors if you don't realize it. If I just press G, start moving this around, you can still see it's there as an extra set of vertices. So actually all I need to do is having pressed G, is press the axes that I want it to go in, which is X, and I can move that along there. Now again, if I want to get that being back to vertical, I can go back into the shear tool, and again, I can move. If I turn this to one, it will go exactly to where it was. I'm actually gonna go two, because I need it to be 45 degrees in the other direction. I'm gonna go back to my select G and X to carry on moving, somewhere around there. I'll fix this later. Actually, let's go a bit further. So I get it relatively close to that corner. And then again, E to extrude, escape to stop, and then G and Z to start going downwards. So for now, I think I'm gonna do this all the way around this frame, just for completeness sake. So let's use the shear tool one more time. I'm just gonna shear there. I want to make sure we go to two, G and Z to go down a little bit further. Go into side view to make sure that's nice and clear. G and Z a little bit more. And again, let's extrude that, escape, G and X. I'm just gonna go further than I need to because we're actually gonna use the symmetry tool. And now I've got that past the center line. All I need to do is press Shift and S so I can move the origin to the center. Now, importantly, if I press Shift and S, and move the origin to the geometry. It's gonna be slightly offset because we haven't got this completed. So I'm actually gonna move it to the cursor there. And then when I press Alt and X and symmetrize, that will symmetrize perfectly down the center. And then I'll just press Shift and S and move it back to the geometry so it's nice in the middle. And now I've got this nice and ready to go. Lots of detail, which is gonna make the painting nice and quick, easy and interesting. I could just use some dry brushing to go over this. And importantly, it will merge together quite nicely so I can make the rest of this building. So there we go, two quick tools, using the P key to change the profile of a bevel and also using the shear tool to make moving around corners or extruding along corners a much easier task. If you enjoyed the video, please do press the like button as it always helps with the algorithms. All hail the algorithms. And if you want to see more, please do press the subscribe button so you can hear about when I post more videos.